All right, so in this video, we're going to go over the heat transfer in a copper pipe problem once again. So uh, just to uh, give you guys a refresher, the boundary conditions. At R equals inner radius, we have a uh, temperature specified. Our temperature was T uh, saturated. Okay, and at R equals the outer radius, our specified temperature was T sub W. So, if you guys remember from uh, when we were doing problems in Cartesian coordinates, so uh, when we had conduction through a plane window or a wall, okay, yeah, where both the uh, we're at x equals zero and at x equals l, you had temperatures specified t1 and t2. You were able to write the uh, overall rate of heat transfer as a uh, overall temperature difference divided by the net thermal resistance okay that's what you that's what we were able to write and um for for cartesian coordinates the uh, thermal resistance is just equal to the uh, thickness of the wall okay the thickness of the wall divided by the conductivity and the the planar area now for cylindrical coordinates so since our pipe now we're going to switch to cylindrical coordinates we need to uh, our area is no longer going to be constant our area is varying with radius okay so we need to somehow account for that so uh, let's go back to four so for uh, a cylindrical pipe or cylindrical pipe we're going to refer back to Fourier's law okay so the overall so the heat flux Okay, the heat flux is equal to negative conductivity times the uh, derivative of temperature with respect to radius, okay? And we're operating at steady state, okay? We're at steady state, so I need to point that out. And there's no net generation. Steady state without any generation. No net gen of heat, okay? So upon now area in this problem, Area is actually a function of the radius, okay? And if I were to write the expression for area, area is equal to 2 pi radius times the axial length of the pipe. Okay, that's the uh, surface area of the pipe across which heat is being transported. Alright, and Q, okay? Q has to be constant. Q dot has to be constant. Why? Conservation of energy. The overall rate at which heat is being transported has to remain constant at steady state. Okay, you can't have uh, if your heat, the rate of heat transfer is varying, then you're either violating steady state or you're either violating your uh, conservation of energy. Okay, and uh, yeah, we're we're violating none of those. Okay, good. So Q dot over um, two pi R L upon substitution and this is what our expression starts to look like now if we start separating our variables q dot over 2 pi l that's constant i'm going to switch uh switch curl cur uh, switch colors so we're going to have 1 over r integrated with respect to r on the uh, left hand side and on the right hand side we're going to have of course negative k is going to be constant and temperature is going to be integrated from Okay, so the radius is going to be integrated from the inner radius to the outer radius, and the temp the temperature is going to go from the uh, temperature the T sat the temperature at inner radius and the temperature at the outer radius T sub W. And upon integration, upon integration, our final result looks something like this: Q dot over two pi L natural log of the ratio of outer and inner radius. Let me just fix that for you. All right, negative K. And the integration on the right-hand side is pretty simple. Okay. So here we're, we're concerned with the rate of, we're concerned with the overall rate of heat transfer. So the overall rate of heat transfer becomes equal to, if we just do the algebra, negative K, times 2 pi L divided by natural log RO over RI, okay? 
and the temperature difference okay um this right here is good um it, at this point i have sufficient i have a sufficient information to compute the rate of heat transfer okay if i know my conductivity if i know my axial length i know the ratios of my outer and inner radius of the pipe and of course the temperature difference then i'm good of course the key assumption here is that k is constant k does not vary with temperature that is a key assumption here k does not vary with temperature k does not vary with temperature okay which is why we're able to pull it out of the integral right here which is why we're able to pull it out of the integral all right but um this is good but uh, we usually want more okay this is uh, we can do better so remember how the overall heat transfer rate was given as a temperature difference sorry um referring back to the uh, the way fourier's law is written in many heat transfer textbooks you have a heat you have the uh, heat flux actually no sorry the rate of heat transport is equal to some area times the negative the conductivity and the temperature difference divided by some change in length okay this is the uh, this is essentially the form the uh, the format in which equations the in, in which the uh, rate of overall heat transfer is expressed in various uh, heat transfer textbooks, which I'll link in the description. So if we if we were to equate both of these, if we were to equate both of these, let's see what happens. Okay. The uh, on the left hand side, I'll have negative area k. Of course, the uh, temperature difference is going to be T W. The temperature difference remains the same. And the change in length is going to be the change in radius, which is just going to be RO minus RI. And that shall become equal to, all right, that shall become equal to K times 2 by L divided by natural log of the ratio of outer and inner radius times the temperature difference. Okay, now the, uh, em the point that I want to emphasize here, the point that I want to emphasize here temperatures drop out conductivity drops out okay the negative sign also drops out what is the uh, physical significance of this a what is the physical significance of this a so let's see what's left of this expression a is equal to now pay attention a is equal to the difference in the radius times 2 pi l divided by the ratio of R O over R I. Okay. Right now it's not really apparent. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? Okay. Um yeah, right now it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But let me be sneaky for a second. Let's say I expand two pi R O L minus two pi R inner L divided by natural log of two pi R O L divided by 2 pi r i l notice how in the uh, denominator i have introduced i've multiplied by 2 pi and divided by 2 pi i've multiplied by l and divided by l and this right here now if you guys pay if you guys um follow along this is the outer area and on the other hand on the other hand this is the inner surface area again outer surface area of the pipe and the inner surface area of the pipe so this right here becomes equal to outer area minus inner rate inner area divided by the uh, natural log divided by the natural log of the ratio of both areas and this by definition is the log mean area okay so the area this uh, the significance of this area term now we have a uh, meaning of now we have a proper definition for that term the log mean area okay all right log mean area and log mean area why do we need log mean area because the um, 
in cylindrical coordinates as you have as you transfer heat in the radial direction the uh, surface area keeps increasing as your radial distance increases the uh, surface area is increasing so you need a uh, so you need a smooth average you need a smooth average and log mean area is preferred over arithmetic mean area because it's a more it gives a more smooth average all right so now if you refer back to the thermal resistance all right now if i want to get a thermal resistance for cylindrical coordinates okay now if i want to have a my thermal resistance in cylindrical coordinates again it's it has to be equal to some width which is going to be my change in radius okay and of course in the denominator there's going to be a conductivity the constant conductivity of the pipe and we're going to have log mean area okay so if you want to if you want to look at the problem once again if you want to look at the entire problem once again of the pipe so here I'm going to draw a, this is going to be my badly drawn section of the pipe. This is my inner radius at R equals inner radius temperature was T sat and at R equals outer radius temperature was Tw. So now this, this problem can be reformulated as a uh, thermal circuits problem. So on the left side you have the saturation temperature and on the right side you have the wall temperature, the outer wall temperature. And this thermal resistance right here, this R thermal resist the thermal resistance is just gonna be due to the conductivity of the pipe, which we just talked about. RO minus RI over K times the net times the log mean area. Area log mean, okay. And the overall heat transfer, the overall heat transfer can once again be written as T sat minus T W divided by divided by the thermal resistance. So this right here is a uh, a much more straightforward method rather than deriving the uh, temperature profile in the uh, in cylindrical coordinates as we did in the previous video so just to give you guys a quick recap again uh, we started off by listing our boundary conditions we did a uh, comparison with Cartesian coordinates and we talked about the uh, thermal resistance the idea of a thermal resistance in Cartesian coordinates and but we want to implement that in cylindrical coordinates so we start off by going back to Fourier's law again, again at steady state, no net gen. Also, um, I'll just constant conductivity. That's very important. Constant thermal conductivity. Okay. Um, we pointed out that the area, the area across which heat is being transferred, is a function of the radius. So upon integration, the overall rate of heat transfer is given by this expression. All right. Now we wanted to implement. We want now the uh, the expression one. Okay, that was good. That was that, that was not bad. But we wanted something more simpler. Okay, so we wanted something in the uh, in this format. And upon equating both of these equations, upon equating both of these expressions, expression one and two we were able to arrive at the definition of the log mean area okay and we, we briefly discussed the significance of the log mean area why we need log mean area because the area across which heat is being transferred is varying as radius increases and finally we were able to derive the idea the concept of thermal resistance in cylindrical coordinates now we have a good expression for that we have a width we have a constant conductivity of the material and the log mean area okay and once you have the concept of thermal resistance under your belt this problem becomes uh, the analysis becomes a lot more simpler okay by the circuits analogy and yeah there you have it guys thanks for sticking around and i hope this video was helpful all right